Do you believe it's possible for our society to shift its perception of learning a new language from being viewed as a burden or pressure to being viewed as a pleasurable experience? Can we convince people that it's never too late and never too early to embark on this beautiful journey of language learning. Now, inspired by my parents' passion for languages in my seemingly traditional family, although non-traditional in my country, we speak in four languages. Uzbek is our native language, while Russian is our second language. And we've also embraced English and French as foreign languages. Now, when I say that we speak these languages, I really mean it. Well, of course, I have to acknowledge that some uh, family members' proficiency uh, varies across these foreign languages. And you know what? I truly believe in the many advantages of learning and speaking multiple languages. I see these benefits every single day. So today, I want to urge people in our society to embrace language learning with courage as it has the power to empower and it can also heal us at different stages of our lives. So I did some research and I came across some findings that sometimes surprised me and other times simply validated my own beliefs and my sentiments. And today I want to share some compelling facts and also some of my personal stories, all supported with scientific evidence. And all this in order to challenge one of the misconceptions in our society, that language learning can place undue pressure on our children, or that it can become a burden in later life. On the contrary, speaking and learning multiple languages can have so many benefits. So, one of the fascinating aspects of speaking and learning multiple languages is its impact on our cognitive flexibility. Now, um, this term actually originated in the early 20th century in the works by John Dewey and William James. This is our ability to adapt our thoughts and our uh, behavior in response to our environment. Now, for example, when we think about several concepts at the same time, or when we adjust our strategy to solve some problem, we use our flexible thinking. In the same way, bilinguals, because they have to deal with two languages at the same time, well, they are supposed to be more effective than their counterparts who speak one language, monolinguals, in adapting to current task demands. Now, I have grown up speaking Uzbek in my family, and I was exposed to Russian from the age of two. That's when I started attending um, a Russian-speaking kindergarten. I began my intentional language learning journey at 16 when I took up learning English seriously. And now I can distinctly remember that it took me about two years to achieve just a lower intermediate level in English. However, later, another two years to achieve a strong intermediate level in German. And even later, only one year to achieve a strong intermediate level in English. French. Now, looking back, with each new language, it was easier for me to grasp and utilize new language structures, grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. And with each new language, I could constantly contrast and compare new language structures with the ones that I already knew. And imagine my surprise when I came across a study that actually shed light on my personal experience. A study conducted back in 2017 by Verhagen and colleagues underlines the role of prior language learning experience during the second language learning process. And they explained that prior experience actually has positive influence on our ability, on our ability to process and reason in another language. 
Now, similarly, I am observing a comparable yet, I would say, more accelerated pattern in my son's language learning experience. Now, from his birth until the age of two, he was primarily exposed to Uzbek as his native language. And he would use Russian only receptively while watching his Russian cartoons. At six, he started learning English. A year later, at seven, we took him to a Russian-speaking school. Another year later, he took up French. Now, I assure you, all voluntarily. Today, at almost 12, he speaks only Uzbek at home with relatives, only Russian at school, and I would say he already has a native-like pronunciation, and I should admit his pronunciation is already better than mine. <laughs> he can communicate in English more successfully verbally, and sometimes so successfully that he even tries to catch me mispronouncing or not knowing the words from his Russian or English books. So he'll show me a word and then he will watch me very closely to make sure that I'm not using a dictionary. So I have five minutes to respond. Sometimes it can be a shorter period of time. And if I don't respond, he comes with a statement. Mom, you don't know this word, do you? Luckily, his French is still elementary. So interestingly, he has almost no or maybe insignificant first accent in most of these languages. Now, we will revisit the question of pronunciation in uh, language learning process of uh, children a bit later. Now, I would like to show you some video excerpts with my son with my nephew and with my father, who started learning English independently at the age of 40. Should I was 40. I know that my English is not perfect, uh, especially my grammar and my pronunciation is not perfect because I learn English myself without any teachers. I use English when I talk to my children, to my grandchildren. Sometimes I read English novels, watch English movies. Life is good when you speak in many languages. Yes, Khaleza. Salary Ashana. Bugun my take of our demon. Kanishna. Kanishna. Was we tell the Kanaka word Kanishna? Albata. Do you speak English? Yes. What the weather like today? Normal. Normal. Do you like hot weather or uh, or cold weather? Do you like winter or summer? I like more summer. Why? Because it's it's hot and I don't go to school. Tell me, do you sleep always for resting or active uh, resting? Uh, I uh, watch TV, sleep, eat. That's all. That's all. Peter, скажите про себя. Меня зовут Беглот. А меня зовут Мергиос. А вы братья или сестры? Не братья. А чем вы занимаетесь? Мы учимся в школе. Мергиос, какой тебе нравится предмет? Больше всего. Больше всего мне нравится английский. А мне больше всего нравится математика. Английский не мас, я ухожу в Мергиос, а не? А, чуть-чуть, мне уже кинмас. Уже кинмас, я тлеше больше я мы. Ну как, вы себя узнали или нет? Ну, как будто мы были, конечно, не в том возрасте, у нас, наверное, поменялись вкусы, какие предметы нам больше нравятся или меньше теперь. Расскажи про свое хобби. А, да, я это блогер. Ты видеоблогер, а что ты снимаешь? Ну, эдитор, я эдитор, как говорится. Окей. А, Мирьёс, а что тебе больше нравится? Чем ты чаще занимаешься в эти дни? Ну, может, программирование. Я люблю создавать разные игры. Are you reading books in English? Yes. I read a lot. Not a lot, but sometimes I read books. And what are you reading these days in English? In English, anime, how my little brother says, and 
Спасибо вам большое. Je t'aime. Je t'aime aussi. Now, this video features only some of my family members, but that's pretty much how we communicate with each other, switching in between languages. Now, for this reason, in my view, another benefit of learning and speaking more than one language is code switching. Code switching is using two or more languages within a single conversation. And recent studies show that code switching patterns can differ depending on the emotional state of a speaker and that language choice is situation dependent. Apparently, children can also learn to code switch purposefully. And that's all in order to seek support or soothe themselves later in life. That's amazing, isn't it? In my multilingual household, words and phrases in different languages play a fascinating role. So, out of sheer curiosity, we decided to do a little experiment in my family. For three days, we observed each other and we noted down our observations and impressions at the end of each day. After three days, we discussed our, discussed our findings. I realized that I mainly use English, French, and also Uzbek in order to show my affection to my son. And I would frequently use such words like mon chéri, ma vie, my love, John Mbolam. And however, while reprimanding our son, my husband and myself, we noticed that we mainly use Uzbek language and we would frequently use such expressions like or Salam Khana. Additionally, we also noticed that our son, regardless of who he's talking to, mainly uses Russian and sometimes English in order to discuss his school related issues or topics. Like recently, when I asked him how well he was doing in his school English class, he gave a brief but very expressive easy, mom, easy. And it was complete with a memorable eye roll. Now, we as parents also noticed that we exclusively use Russian in order to provide moral support or motivation to our son's academic achievements. And lastly, we also investigated our chat history on the Telegram Messenger between me and my son. And this all for the past several years. Upon investigations, we realized that we mainly use English language to communicate and sometimes several languages at the same time. And even until recently, we realized that we keep using English as a primary language for communication. However, our habit of mixing languages never changed. Apparently, there is a term for this phenomenon, code mixing. Code mixing is about blending several languages in a single sentence or utterance. And apparently, it happens subconsciously and in informal settings between multilingual and also bilingual communities. Now, based on my personal empirical observations, I've noticed a rising trend in parents taking their children to English language learning schools and other language learning schools. However, despite this, I also noticed that there is a significant number of parents who still believe that language learning on top of school classes can be overwhelming for their kids. And they often say, why now? Why so early? Let the kid enjoy being a kid. And there are some parents who also suggest that it's better to delay language learning until the child grows older. But the debate with the kids are actually more successful than adults has been going on for a while. Stefan Krushen, a prominent uh, expert in the field of linguistics, says, the older is faster, but young is better.
And many experts also explain that the earlier the child starts language acquisition, the easier it becomes. Neurobiology also suggests a critical or sensitive period. And according to it, infants and children are usually more successful in language acquisitions than adults, despite adults being more cognitively developed. However, we should challenge the misconceptions that language learning is only for the use. We should challenge the misconceptions that learning a language as an adult can be a burden. No. Recent research actually indicates that languages can be learned at any stage of life. And adults are believed to have many advantages over children. For example, adults can always relate to their previously learned experience. Secondly, they are usually highly motivated. And thirdly, adults have an experience in learning how to learn. However, there is one uh, shortcoming. I have to say that. Experts believe that despite the fact that learning a language is generally easier for adults than for children, acquiring a correct pronunciation is usually more difficult after the age of 10 and above. Now, did you know that brain, human brain, keeps its plasticity even as we age? So, I'll tell you more. There was a study back in 2017, which was conducted by Giovanni Babico and her colleagues, which shows that foreign language learning can actually serve as a cognitive intervention in order to promote healthy aging. It's fascinating, isn't it? And several study findings also indicate that language learning actually could delay the onset or severity of neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease, dementia, or Parkinson's disease. So as you see, it's not all about picking up on a new skill. It's about aging in a healthy way. So as we have seen today, learning and speaking multiple languages has a lot of benefits, including cognitive, social, and medical clinical impacts. So now I want to pose my question again. Can we convince people that it's never er too early or never too late to embark on this beautiful journey called language learning? Can we start our own multilingual story no matter where we are in life. Thank you very much.